if you want to say start and pitch your own program, um, say that out loud, and I'll I'll try to remember to do that. So. Same, All right. Yeah. Same thing. We've got we've got Patrick with United Launch Alliance, who's going to be the be doing the post launch uh, callouts. I'm going to do the countdown and and the launch myself. I'm flying this in Kerbal while Patrick is watching out from a uh, from his place to do the callouts, and this will be our second attempt at launching our Parker Sorta probe on the Delta for Delta ish for heavy here. Um, we've already throttled up. We've got all of our panels and all of our indicators so we can see what's going on. The flight computer's turned on, and we'll start at T minus 15 seconds. Chat, tell me your go. Give me a go in chat, and we'll start the count at T minus 15 seconds when I see enough goes in chat. That's two goes, three goes, four goes, 18 goes. That's like enough goes now. So we'll say T minus 15, 14, <laughs> 13. This is cool. 12. Rofies have ignited to burn off the excess hydrogen. I, I don't know, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Oh, that's better. All right, we have tower clear. And now passing 10 seconds into flight, all three are at 68, looking good in the full thrust mode. Chamber pressure is nominal within family. Seeing a good symmetric burn across all three boosters. Now passing 20 seconds into flight. And 25 seconds, vehicle is beginning the pitch yaw roll program. And vehicle control is looking good. Now passing 34 seconds into flight. Mach 1, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Now 40 seconds into flight, vehicles now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. When do I throw and the core, core booster is uh, now throttling down to the partial thrust mode, chamber pressure response looks good. And now passing one minute into flight. And seeing good burn on the RS-68, on the port and starboard boosters in the full thrust mode and the core booster in the Full thrust. Oh man, I messed that up already. It's all good. I'm all messing right. it up too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we're at one minute, 20 seconds into flight. And seeing uh, slight wobble in the boosters as expected. Vehicles controls are uh, <laughs> vehicles <laughs> controlling through the atmosphere as expected. Some some atmospheric disturbance we're seeing. Things totally under control. And now coming. Yeah, yeah, nothing to worry about. One minute, 45 seconds into flight. And the vehicle now weighs one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of almost 6,000 pounds per second. And now passing two minutes into flight. ACS press valve has been fired. ACS pressurization is now underway. Bottle response looks good. And two minutes, 15 seconds into flight. We have pre-start on the RL-10 engine. For, uh, and that we have LOX pre-start followed by, I'm sorry, LH-2 pre-start followed by LOX pre-start for thermal conditioning of RL-10 components. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the call out. We had <laughs> port and starboard separation. It's all good. And it looks like we're going to be having Vico here momentarily. You're going to have to, to help me out on the call. Yep. We've got about five seconds till Vico. Three. All right. Standing by for Vico. And we've got And Bico. we have Vico booster engine cutoff. Standing by for stage step. And we have good indication of stage separation. And we have RL-10 ignition. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm still a little delayed, so I'm trying to make my calls ahead of time. Something, something and payload. Have... Like... <laughs> <laughs> and we have good indication of payload bearing jettison. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to fly this a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit of a downwards pitch so we don't get quite as much apoapsis here, but we still get the acceleration. I mean... At some point, this is just going to kick us out of orbit. <laughs> We're, we've already got an apo that's like 
getting ready to approach a GTO, it looks like. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Boy, this thing really hauls. I, I'm very impressed with your uh, rocket design here. We may have way too much thrust in this stage. I think the RL-10C is, is a lot less thrust to weight um, than I'm rocking right here. But we did have a, a shutdown, didn't we? So, uh, yeah, so you would have a short first burn, and then you would have, uh, it would be like a 10-minute coast period, and then you would, oh. um, and then you do your final escape burn. Okay. We're two hours till the Apoaps is up there. So so the orbital mechanics, that we're, we're not trying to simulate the orbital mechanics of the Parker Solar Probe. Um, that's a whole other ball of wax. Um, we're just sort of looking at the launch, but I imagine it, it sort of coasts up to an Apo or something like that, then fires again at Apo. Um, and I've pushed my Apo way too far. And the other thing is that in real life, the launches and the timings take a lot longer um, because Kerbin, Kerbin, our planet in Kerbal Space Program, is teeny tiny. It's got the same gravitational attraction as Earth, but it's something like, what, one-sixth the side of Earth or one-tenth the side of Earth or something like that? It's, it's teeny tiny compared to Earth. So uh, when we talk about a burn happening for you know, 60 seconds or 10 minutes or whatever. In real life, that's how big the Earth is and how big the orbits are versus in Kerbal. It's like our, our sort of Kerbalized, arcadified, this is a video game we can play. Um, you can install mods to make your planet bigger, but, but we're not doing that. So I'm going to just go ahead and fly this thing again. Um, Patrick, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Yeah, Doss, absolutely. This has been a pleasure. I've had so much fun talking with you. Oh, my gosh. It's it's 9.12 right now. Um, I know, Chad, every single time we, we say that, oh, oh, well, here we have, like, a uh, we'll have time for a Q&A session or something. Um, do, we, do we have time to maybe ask for two questions from Chad or something like that to see if there's anything good? Yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead. I'm totally being that bad host where it's like, well, I know you would stay here hanging out with us for another hour if I probably <laughs> asked, but you also have real rockets to launch. So uh, Yeah, yeah, I will, I will have to go. I know that there's some work I have to catch up on, but uh, I'm having too much fun, so I, I would love to do a couple of questions. Exactly. So, so if there's a couple questions right quick, uh, questions for Patrick. Again, this is Patrick Moore. He's a systems engineer with United Launch Alliance. You'll hear him on the actual Parker Solar Probe launch, uh, currently coming up August 4th. Um, if you watch that launch, it's super early in the morning, but if you watch it, you will hear his voice again. Um, and if you have any questions, put some questions in chat for us. Yeah, there we go. Saber just put that link in the chat. ULA systems engineer and flight commentator. Uh, where can I download this awesome chatterer mod? <laughs> I think people want to download your audio for their own launches, Patrick. <laughs> have you ever, have Man, you ever heard of that mod? Yeah, uh, no, I haven't heard of that mod. Um, I will be happy. You just call me up. I'll come over, uh, <laughs> sit behind you while you're playing KSP, and I'll, I'll do the narration. You'll just watch over their shoulder and do the narration. Uh, there's a mod called yeah. Chatterer that has, like, randomly played Kerbal noises, and it's just, like, radio chatter, like, murder, 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 beep. And it just puts in random radio chatter while your rocket's flying. So that's what they're referring to. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, see if I can just get some canned phrases or something <laughs> like that, and I'll, I'll send that on. We'll just record the webcast, and we'll create a mod that... Yeah, okay, we're not going to talk about creating a mod. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Please let Patrick know he did a really well on the callouts, minus the delay. It was like a live stream from ULA. Patrick, you did a really good job. Oh, that is so nice. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Um, what kind of batteries does the Delta IV use? Do you have any? I don't know what sort of batteries the uh, Delta IV uses. They're they like are batteries. very special batteries. Um, I like it. So it's super high capacity. I mean, you think about it, you're driving all of these big electronics boxes, and some of them are driving uh, actuators and things like that. So... Super high capacity. I know that it's too heavy for one person to lift. <laughs> so right. that's about what I know. I'm not a, a certainly not a battery expert, so I couldn't tell you the the composition. But uh, I can tell you that they are too heavy for me to lift. Gotcha. Oops! I just separated the upper stage and lit the motor at the same time. It's fine. <laughs> Who programmed this thing? Um, let's see if there's any other questions here. <laughs> Do you have a big red button that somebody pushes at T minus four minutes? Like, is, is there a human uh, step that says, yes, we are proceeding with the terminal count? Or is it yeah, just... Yeah, so doesn't... absolutely. Really? There is. Um, 
You know, I've, it's not the part of the countdown that I'm involved with, but there's uh, someone called the LC or the launch conductor. Right. And so they have a switch at their panel, and it's called the LC ready switch. Okay. And so that is one of the switches that, that that's kind of the big switch where it's saying, okay, the whole team's ready to proceed, and if that switch isn't flipped, then we can't proceed with the count. No kidding. So so there is a human step. There's a physical switch that the, the launch – what was it, launch coordinator, would you say? Launch – controller yeah launch yeah co- launch okay. coordinator launch the lc so, so you'll hear him he's uh he's pretty much his name's scott barney he is going to be the guy that you hear the most when you're listening in on the uh, parker solar probe launch okay cool so did, i got i have a question right quick um is there like a big hat at the cafeteria at ula and everybody puts in their names and then they draw a name and that's the person who does what you're going to do or is this like part of your job description or, or how did you get the 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 chance to do the launch commentary like the the launch, what you're going to be doing yeah good question so uh so i don't know if you're familiar with the previous launch commentators there's rob gannon marty right. malinowski and uh steve agate used to do all the delta launches right and uh when steve decided that he was ready to retire then they were looking for a replacement and um so i'd, I'd worked with some of the other uh, flight commentators previously right. and you kind of to do a flight commentary you kind of have to know you don't want to be an expert on any one thing but you need to know a little bit about everything on the right, rocket right. and so um so they they kind of picked me because i'm a systems engineer i i don't you know i'm not a specialist in any one area but i can kind of read data look at uh understand propulsion systems avionic systems ordnance systems things like that and i know you know, I know enough to talk about it on a webcast, and that's, uh, I think that that was kind of the criteria that they were looking for. I like it. I, I That sounds like a job for me. I'm not an expert at anything, so I think I could. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and and I think that that's kind of, that's that's what I like about being a systems engineer, and, right. and Das, I see you're, you're pretty knowledgeable about uh, just about everything on the Delta IV now after watching all terrible. your videos. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I, I think you'd be qualified. Thank you. I like that. Hey, see, chat. Look, if the whole streaming thing doesn't work out for me, <laughs> God, that's so cool. So, so, did, was there like an audition? Was there like ULA auditions for the launch commentary? Or <laughs> uh, no, I mean, so basically, it was. Uh, I think I was walking by Rob Gannon's office, and he pulled me in, and he said, "What are you doing tomorrow?" And I, I think I said nothing. <laughs> and then he told me to fly out to Florida and train up with uh, Steve Agid. Oh, <laughs> so that was so pretty cool. much it. So I may have been at just at the wrong place at the wrong time the wrong or something. Place. And uh, <laughs> Rob, Rob just picked the first person that walked by his office. The first poor soul um, who he who he was able to wrangle into doing the commentary, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was it, it was a pleasure, and I think that uh, it was. Um, so the training really was. I sat with Steve Agid, and we kind of chatted, and he told me. And I, I have so much respect for Steve. I think he is like the best flight commentator I've ever heard. And I don't know if, if folks on the chat have heard his, uh, his work on previous Delta launches. But so I'm, I'm working my way up and I'm trying to be a little bit more entertaining like Steve was. But uh, he, he set the bar pretty high. So I've been kind of practicing in my bedroom in front of a mirror a lot and try, nice. <laughs> trying to work on, uh, work on my, my style like Steve had. I think I think we were pretty chat. We were pretty entertained today, weren't we? I mean, mostly because the uh, there are flames creeping up the side of the rocket, as as expected. I think um, the real launch will will not be a Kerbal launch, but uh, from from what we saw today, I, mean, I think you're going to do a fantastic job. I mean, this seems like a very useful practice session. <laughs> yeah, this was great. I I really enjoyed doing this, and and I thought this was so much fun. I was hoping you'd ask me to do the commentary, so I'm oh. I'm glad we made it work. No, that's a, I, I'm so glad that the the Twitch delay was short enough that we could uh that you could watch the stream. And I mean, some of your callouts were like perfectly on. You said you know now two minutes forty seconds into flight, and I looked up and it said two minutes forty seconds. So you were you were saying them in advance by a couple seconds, weren't you? Yeah, I was uh, I was guessing, but uh, I'm glad that it worked out. I I made some lucky guesses, I think. You just, I, <laughs> but hey, that was fun. 
You did a great job. You did an absolutely fantastic job. Um, Patrick, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Uh, we look forward to hearing you when Parker Solar Probe launches on the Delta IV Heavy, uh, currently coming up August 4th. Um, this was a blast. I know that Chad had a blast. I had a blast. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your weekend to, to come and spend some time with the Kerbal Space Academy here. Yeah, absolutely, Doss. This was such a pleasure, and I had so much fun. So thank you so much for having me out. Good deal. We